Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. I believe that God has given us a message that's going to change your life. Listen and be blessed because something is going to be said that is going to deliver you, pick you up, and strengthen you, and keep you. Thank you for joining us. Let me please, chapter 30. That's where my message is for today. Deuteronomy 30. Praise Jesus. Are you there? Please stand with me if you are. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's look at verse 19, if you, if you will go there with me. This is about choice. 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 I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You can be seated. I, I want to talk with you concerning the subject of choose life. Choose life. This is a very, very uh, important topic here uh, that I think we all need to um, really look at. Choosing life is critical. Uh, let me tell you, it is, this is a, 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 a time whenever Moses had brought Israel over the wilderness. Forty days, no, excuse me, 40 nights, no, excuse me, check, I'm just testing you. 40 years, making the right choice. It's, it's critical that you make the right choice. It really is. There are some people who are listening to me now who have made bad choices. That would be everybody. Some choices have much more consequences, much more serious consequences behind them than others. Some choices are much more important than others. There are some choices that you can make that will be pretty, you know, the consequences is pretty minimal. Like, okay, where are you going to eat at this afternoon? You know, would I go to Mickey D's or Burger King? Would I go to... Uh, out back or where? That's yeah, those things are not that serious. But there are some choices, and that we have to make in our lives that are very, very. They have a, a great deal of consequences behind them. And you cannot make those. You should make those choices haphazardly. You got to really think about it. Um. Here in this story, and I certainly can't teach all of it, this is the ending, at the ending of the wilderness journey. Moses had been leading them for 40 years through this desert. 40 years, 40. And if you read it or even heard it preached, or, but if you hadn't done any of that, you've seen the movie. So you know they've made some bad choices. They really did. And if you're like me, you've probably asked yourself, what in the world were they thinking about? You know, God did all of this, and they still chose to rebel against God. How could they do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, oftentimes, when choices are presented to us, it's very difficult to make the right choice at times. Something the Lord said to me years ago, and that is that life looks like death, and death oftentimes looks like life. So when we make choices based on how we see it, 
we will choose what we believe to be a life-giving choice. However, the consequences of it can bring death. Death, of course, not just physical death, although that, that happens too, but the word death in the scriptures means separation. So sometimes the choices that we make can separate us from life-giving sources. So you have to be careful about the choices that you make. My brother and I, we talk about this all the time, and uh, we talk about choosing life. And, and um, Moses, at this point, is at the end of his journey, the end of his life. He has been looking forward to leading Israel, not just through the wilderness, but through, but into the promised land. Moses has been experiencing this wilderness for 80 years. No, no, I said 80, not 40, 80. They, the, the nation of Israel, have been experiencing it for 40. Moses was there 40 years as a shepherd tending to his father-in-law, sheep. For 40 years. And then God called him from the burning bush. You know, the, um, he's walking through, he's listening to their complaints as they murmured and complained against God. Are y'all with me here? Uh, you have to be careful how you even hang around people who make bad choices all the time. Because their bad choices can get you in trouble. Y'all don't, come on, y'all know that. You ever been riding in the car with somebody and they had an illegal substance in it? You ain't doing nothing wrong. Hey, Guess what's going to happen? You're going to jail too. <laughs> For real. For real. You, this is the truth. So they, they start throwing it out the window. Trying to get rid of it. I ain't, I ain't did nothing. You made the choice to be with, to ride with, to go with, the wrong person. Come on, somebody. It's the truth. There are consequences to your choices. Sound like, it looks like some of y'all done been there and done that. <laughs> okay. Moses, okay, saw the disastrous effect that these choices had on Israel. He saw it. I mean, it was bad. Um, he tried to instruct them during this 40-year wandering to, to make right choices, okay? So you remember even after God brought the plagues, and I know I didn't have, don't have much time to talk about all this, but after God brought the plagues upon Egypt, he brings them out and and. And they come out and they go to the, bring them to the, to the problem there. And God leads them to the problem. Anytime God was leading you and you encounter a problem, you've got to know God knew that problem was going to be there before he led you there. Okay. He knew that problem was going to be there before you got there. So you were there. That means God has a solution for this thing. And you've got to seek God and make sure that you make the right choice. Praise God. Most of the time when Moses was there, most of the time they would make good choices. Only when Moses was absent or when Moses was ignored did disaster strike. So what do you mean, Pastor? Pastor. It is critical that you are listening to the right voices as you make these choices. The Bible says that there are many voices in the world and none of them are without signification. 
there are all kind of voices that are speaking to you over these choices that you are going to have to make. We are at a critical time for a lot of our high school seniors and even in college seniors where they're going to have to make a choice. Some of them, the college seniors, made some critical choices a few years ago when they had to choose a major. What are you going to major in? Um, what's going to be your area of expertise, the, your area of study? You want to zero it down. You've got to make a choice. You can't just, you can't just specialize in everything. Now, well, you could. You're going to be in school for a long, long time. And somebody got to pay the bill. Usually, you got to make a choice, okay? And you, you try to choose what you think would be best for you, what you think you like to do. Sometimes people try to choose what they think they can make money at. Well, you may not be good at this thing that you chose to make money at. They say if you do what you love, then you never work a day in your life. There is some truth about that. Anyway, you have to make right choices because there are consequences behind the choices that you make. Now, I was saying this earlier, uh, how the, the most important choice that you can make in life is choosing Jesus Christ as your Savior. For real. I mean, really choosing. I'm not talking about just saying it, but believing it. You know, you speak it with your mouth and you believe it in your heart. That is the biggest and the most important choice that anybody can make in this life. Why is that choice so important? It's important because that choice goes beyond the grave. It goes beyond this life. It affects you in the world to come. It's going to determine where you're going to spend eternity. This is critical. So that's the biggest choice. And if you're hearing me, whether you're in the sanctuary or you are listening through other means, and if you don't know Jesus in the parting of your sins, if you have not accepted Christ in your life, this is a major choice. And I, I beg you, don't put off that choice. Because you don't know what tomorrow or even today is going to bring. The second biggest choice that you can ever make is the choice of who you're going to marry. Critical. Very, very critical. Because that person can make or break you. For real. So you can't make those choices based upon looks, physique, all that stuff, because all that's going to change anyway. <laughs> Probably everything that's up is going to go down. <laughs> Y'all ain't believing me, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. It is the truth. Just keep on living. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, oh boy, so, making the right choice is critical for that. Very, very, very critical. Life is full of choices. And the, even in a perfect environment, God placed Adam in an environment where he had to make a choice. God never took away his ability to choose. I believe it's because God wanted Adam and all of us to choose him because we wanted to, not because we had to. So all of the worship that God receives from us, it's got to come out of a heart, a willing heart, a heart that chooses to worship God, a heart that chooses to praise God, a heart that chooses to honor God, a heart that chooses to exalt God. Even in my troubles, I'm still exalting you, God. But you can also choose to ignore God. You can become an agnostic or you can become an atheist and just choose to ignore God while God is still keeping you alive. So God 
puts in the Garden of Eden, which is Adam's home, a whole lot of trees, the Bible said, trees that was pleasant to the eyes. Or should I say trees that was good for food? All of them were good. But there was one tree that he placed there that he put a pro prohibition on. And God pretty much said to him, you, can, you are not to eat of this one. Because the day you eat of it, you're going to die. Have you ever asked God, asked yourself, why God did that? Why are you going to put that danger there? Because Adam had to have a choice. The whole human race had to have a choice. And you have a choice. You have to choose the right choices. It's not always easy. It's not always simple. Sometimes it's hard because most people are going in the wrong direction, making bad choices. If you haven't been faced with, a, with it, you will be, and most of us have been. As a teenager, as a preteen, I was faced with whether or not I was going to become a drinker or not. My friend Pig, you've heard me talk about Pig? Poor Pig. Yep. Pig was about, we were probably 12 years old. And Pig, he was a little older than me. So Pig was already a drinker. Me and Pig agreed that we were going to leave school and buy a fifth or a pint or whatever of Boone's Farm. Probably don't know what Boone's Farm is now. It's, it's not a place where you go to pick cherries. <laughs> it's a wine. It was a, uh, do I still make boom farm? Don't you answer that question. <laughs> it was a wine. It was a, a, a very cheap wine. It was a, a, a way to get a cheap high. I'd never drank wine. So this would have been my first opportunity. Me and Pig, we decided to hang out. We leave in school early and we're going to hang out. So we stopped by the store. Check this out. Here we are. I'm, I'm about 12 years old. Pig's a, pig's a couple years older than me. And we bought a barrel. Uh, not a barrel. <laughs> we, bought a whole, we bought this wine, this, this pint of wine. Okay. And my, my, my folks were working. I knew my daddy was working. I knew my mom was working. I knew my brother was in school. So the house, I had the house to myself. Me and Pig went, went by my house. I didn't live far from, from school. Don't you try that, son. <laughs> my spirit will be there even if I'm not. But, so we get there, and man, Pig, Turned that bottle up to his head and drank. He gobbled that thing down. I was shocked. Whoa, I'm thinking. I mean, he killed it. He didn't drink it all. He drank his, he drank his half. <laughs> and by the, by the way, you know, I was a, uh, anyway. Here, here's yours. And I thought about this. I, this, is my, this is my moment of decision here. This is the time I got to choose. Am I going to do this or not? I don't, my money's in there now. <laughs> well, I chose not to do it. I didn't know. So I told Pig, go ahead, you can have mine. And Pig was happy. He, he drank the rest of it. Right? I'm sitting there looking at him. So that says something to me. Boy, this guy's already, he's been drinking way before now. He drank all that wine, and when he was finished, he got up, walk, walk, we walked on back to school. They probably would have had to carry me back, but, <laughs> but he made a choice early on in life in his preteen years to drink. And you fast forward years and years later, that same choice came back to haunt Pig. 
He died in a drunken stupor. He died drunk. Yeah. It's sad. He was trying to cover up his grief with drinking. His mom died and he was grieving the death of his mother. He, the only thing he knew to do to handle the grief that he had was to drink. And he drank so much and so hard until it, it took him out. So a couple of weeks after his mom died, we were in the same church with a funeral for Pig. This, but this started years earlier when Pig made the choice to drink. I believe that all of his brothers drank, and so he followed in their path. People in your family, if they make wrong choices, it can, it can, it's like a path that can pull you down that same path if you're not careful. You have to make a choice to be different. You can choose that. Even if you've been making bad choices and you've, been, you've done wrong stuff and got caught doing it. You know, some people seem like they get away. They make wrong choices and they get away. They jump out the car and run. You get stuck in the car. <laughs> but sooner or later, the choices are going to catch up with you. Praise God, somebody. So, as I close this message, <laughs> Moses said to the nation of Israel, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Do, do you know that that choice is yours too? He told them to choose life. There had been a generation of Israelites who had made the wrong choice and God would not allow them to enter into the promise. You will never enter into the promise that God has for you. If you make the wrong choice and you consistently make bad choices, you will never receive what God has for you. I'm telling you the truth. You got to choose life. You got to choose life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. The choice is out there. You can choose life. You can make the right choices. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You don't have to follow what everybody else is following. You can choose to go against the grain. You can choose life and the Lord will bless you for your choice. Yeah. We'll finish this at another time. You don't have to keep making bad choices because you, you made bad choices. Yes, bad choices can become habitual, but so can good ones. Well, I feel like dancing now. Oh, Lord, is there, is there a song that I can sing to that? Oh, make good choices. Mm. <laughs> If you make right choices, it's going to pay off after a while. I don't mean that you're going to become rich in money. But if you make right choices, you begin to realize that the other thing that counts other than money. God will bring you to a place where you realize that the relationships your life are much more valuable than money. And you can't have long-term relationships without making the right choice. Choose life that you may live. I said this earlier that what gets us is that life oftentimes looks like death. Death look like life. Sometimes by choosing life, it's going to cut you off from those folks that's choosing death. Death hates life. They don't want to hang around life. Death talk about life. Death will declare, look at life. He thinks he's better than us. <laughs> 
let them talk, let them talk. Don't buy that stuff. Leave it alone. Don't buy into that. You're going to win in the end. Let's stand to our feet. I'm going to pray for some folks now. I want to pray for some people who are choosing life. But yet death is still there. The Bible said, this, the scriptures, the writer said, every time I go to do good, evil is always present. You can always choose death, even in the midst of life. Would you get in the aisle that's closest to you and do like, like she's done? Get in there. Come on up here. Let us pray with you. Can I release life over you? Yes, I can. That I can do. Really, I can. But you still got to choose it. You got to choose to embrace it. You got to choose to receive it. Look at this young man here. Joseph is up here. He's, he's, been, he's been in church all his life. I've, I've been talking. I've talked to Joseph. Oh, Lordy. Oh, man, I've been talking to him about all his life. <laughs> now, Mom. <laughs> and I, and I've, war I've been warning Joseph about this time where he is now, where he becomes a young man. He's grown. I said, boy, you got to make some right choices. <laughs> he still seemed to be determined. Maybe you're in a marriage and it's really tough on you. You got to pray and ask God what to choose, what to do. Maybe it's a job that's bad. You got to pray and ask God. Don't just jump and make a decision on your own. I told them this morning about Lot and the choice that he made. Lot lifted up his eyes, looked at Sodom and Gomorrah, and he chose Sodom. But he didn't know <laughs> that his choice was a curse. He thought it was a blessing, but it was a curse. You can come on, praise team. It became a hindrance to him. It cost him. It cost him his wife. It cost him his flock. It cost him everything he had. Choose life that you may live. You hear me, young folks? But I'm telling you now, you can't. You may think that this bald-headed guy standing here don't know what he's talking about. I did have, I was born with hair. I have to shave it every, every day to keep it looking like this. I like it. <laughs> but I've lived a little while. I can say like David said now. I once was young, but now I'm old. Never seen the righteous forsaken. No seed begging bread. My choices affect all of those in my house. And so do yours. You may not believe this, or you're part of this church. My choices affect you too. Your choices affect others as well. If you choose to be slack, if you're a Christian and you choose to be slack, then your choices affect others. If you choose not to forgive, it's a choice. You have to choose to forgive. You don't feel like it sometimes. You don't even want to oftentimes because you got to let the person go free that have hurt you. But you're going to gain so much more than you lose. Let me tell you something. God's with you. Don't give up. Sometimes it'll seem like you don't have a choice, but you do. God hasn't taken away your choice. He has not. We bless him, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Your hands be upon them and upon their seed. Lead and guide them. Bless what they put their hands to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for victory. Amen and amen.